I was thinking that we can do both the intermediate and the advanced class go over enough decent game we've been I've been at least doing it uh, quite routinely when there is a top tournament in the world and we have right now the first major tournament of the year one of the strongest one in Netherlands Vekanze like a uh, well, old people like me remember it like vacancy, so we'll keep it that way. And the first two games that we will see are, well, somewhat embarrassing losses maybe by Nakamura with the black pieces against Hare Krishna, that are uh, having a very nice tournament, and by Wesley Saw, which lost to Dominguez. And I just spoke upstairs with Grandmaster Feingold, and he was telling me that when he was showing games from that tournament, he pretty much showed both of those games at the same time. Like, he just showed them as one game. And I said, he actually told me two games. I told him immediately, yeah, I know. It was the Nakamura game and the Saw game. Because they are almost identical in the idea of something we spoke last week here. Keeping your king without enough defenders, the square around the king, something that we have mentioned, well, quite several times. And both of those players actually unbelievable. Best blitz players in the world, top of the top, really got checkmated. Like, really checkmated, like not or close to that. All right, so let's start with Nakamura game. So playing against Hari Krishna that I believe won the tournament in 2000 and and 12, the B section, of course, the B section. And the price for <coughs> winning the B section is to get to play in the A section. So he played there last year and actually had a very decent performance. Oh, he seemed like one of the nicest people out there. So they invited him again. And so far he's having a really great tournament. All right. So he's playing against Nakamura, winner of the tournament in 2011. Okay, player number three in the world. Already this move, I think, is tiny indication, by the way, for Black's desire in play. Because bishop d7 is the more common line, but the positions many times get to be either equally or without um, too many winning chances for Black. For example, uh, such m move order. Actually, we have seen similar game between Carlsen and Anand, which Carlsen ended up winning within the last year. Okay, but knight d7 is clearly not uh, having fast exchanges. It's, it's one of those lines that stating you want to fight. And very interesting move, bishop d3. I mean, if someone's seen the game, then he knows. But wh what is the idea of bishop d3? Because it seems so bizarre in the sense of blocking the deep on. How, how does white want to continue here? Hmm? Exactly, exactly, and build the center, which we see, which we see in many, many systems. Uh, just a, a quick system I will mention. He's playing immediately c3, knight f6, and here white has basically three main moves, h3, bishop e2, the pawn of course cannot be taken because of check, right? I've seen some games that uh, it was, and bishop d3, and this is one other idea. So basically, we are getting similar territory, just in a different move order. OK, very good. Black is immediately attacking this. And now, rook e1, because we want to play d4, so no d3. e5, OK. Other than e5, I think there is one extremely critical move for black in this position. Extremely critical move to consider, at least. Which one is it? C4? Well, why C4? Yeah. I mean, why do you want to play D4 and take with the C pawn? Basically, why do wants to get his two pawns in the center? So. By playing c4, you are interrupting, right? You are exactly, exactly. That, that's that's exactly exactly your your plan. So, for example, something like this. Okay, 
Well, black would be more or less comfortable, I would assume, or maybe knight c5, and going after the bishop is a possibility. So which move would be normal for white here? And okay, we are thinking in a very logical way. So what's logical for white? Huh? Exactly. You want to attack this pawn. Of course, take, take, quite comfortable for why white is achieving what he wanted, more or less. I mean, it's actually possible this way. And if not, the c4 is a target. I mean, this is another possibility. Defin definitely, I, I think, a very interesting one to consider. I mean, I wonder, let's see, in a millisecond, what ICC computer is thinking. Okay, you've seen, he was... E5 was his first move, okay, E5, he was zigzagging between E5, that actually was played by Ikaro in the game, let's say he's saying white is 3, 4 tenths better, but okay, not really that strong computer, just to get a feeling, and what does he say after C4? This mouse went insane. Now I'm not joking. The mouse, okay. Okay, so now he, he went to c4. All right. So, in, I, I like c4 actually more. All right, let's see exactly what we are having. c4, b4, and so on. Okay. So, Ikaro chose to play, let's take computer away. Yeah, this would be the first move I would be thinking, just in the sense of d4 I don't want to allow. But okay. e5. So now we are getting some sort of... We started with Sicilian, but which structure we are getting now? Huh? A royal of pies, right, exactly. Like zigzag here, there, but we are exactly getting into an exactly, exactly very uh, direct territory. The knight is going to g3 and, yeah. Rook e8, knight g3. Okay. What are the ideas that we know for white to play in such positions? But okay, but but okay, knight f5 is a move, not an idea. May, maybe I, maybe actually a decent move, but I think not, by the way. Because let's take one step back. Look, it's maybe it's maybe not the most logical thing, but black played, white played one, two, three moves immediately right now, because if white is not playing it immediately. Black will be able to play castle, rook e8, bishop f8, and then he will be threatening to take, and this pawn is under attack. So that's why the knight cannot move. For example, le 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 let's say that white plays like, okay, here. Now white, okay, white can always play b5. That's another story. But now white cannot play knight f1, because take, take, and the pawn is undefended. So in the Ray Lopez, in the main line, it's always important that your knight get to g3 before e4 is under attack too many times. And that's why I think that knight f5 would not work, because, and that's why I play d5. Because if knight f5 take, and the e4 pawn is quite lost. Okay, d5. Okay, many times when there is such a bishop on b7, many, many times, the move d5 is almost, almost automatic, or at least an automatic way of thinking. g6, okay, how, how should white be playing here? I mean, what, what, what are white's ideas, alternatives here? The idea is that in so many openings, so many, when you see those advanced pawns, yes, they are taking away squares, they are controlling territory, but they are also targets. They are also targets, or at least you want to make them a target. How many games where b5 is being played and almost automatically we see this a4? b3, rook e8, okay. So it was this version or another, but we are going to see some ideas such as, such as 
a4. I think that he might not, maybe the reason he didn't play immediately a4 was because of c4 and the knight maybe heading to c5. That's, that's my feeling. So he played first b3. And of course after c4 he would have taken and the c pawn would be weak. For example something like that. Bishop to a4. Or knight to d2. Just seems like white got. Look at the difference between the bishops. This bishop on b7 is the big problem for black. Okay. So like we said, a a4 is a very principle, almost automatic idea. Queen c7, okay. So here, big question. What's the question here? Why white gave, white won a pawn, but this pawn might be weak. Well, what is the question I think that white should be asking himself? Maybe it's a simple answer, but Yes? Why you move his knight to a3? No, no, he moved his knight to a3. Okay, why well, he's attacking the rook, attacking the pawn, attack, maybe attack the bishop. I mean, why well, has a choice here to give the light color bishop or to give, yes, that's what you want to say, Julian? Yeah, I mean, white can take and give his dark color bishop or white can move the rook and give the light color bishop. Every exchange is a huge question. Should you exchange? What you should exchange? Every exchange. So, we're going to have a, you know, <laughs> vote. <laughs> Should white give away his light color bishop or dark color? Okay, who wants to give the dark color bishop and play bishop take knight? Who is in favor of this move? <laughs> wow. Who is in favor of moving the rook? Okay. Who is thinking about... The weather outside. <laughs> okay, so there are multiple hands. All right. Yeah, okay. I think it is correct to give away the light-colored bishop. And I also think the reason is quite obvious just by the pawn structure. You know, you just see all the squares that this bishop has as opposed to the light-colored bishop that is just blocked. So. After this, you know, suddenly bishop takes a3, that's it, I'm just quitting. <laughs> All right, rook b3. So, black has some compensation, that's true. The c file, maybe some play with the bishop here. But all in all, black, black is worse. I mean, he got, he got, he got a worse, tiny worse position in the opening and was outplayed. Knight d7, okay. For example, a light color bishop can never fight this square as opposed to a dark color bishop. So now knight c5 will be met very powerfully with, yeah, just take and okay. That's already, where is the c file? This knight, gonna be here, absolutely dream square. Or maybe we can also transfer this knight. No, that's, this is just, P big pawn down. Bishop a6. Okay, logical. Rook a3. Also logical. I just want to clear the... I want to fight on the a-file because that's where he can penetrate. Bishop b5. Okay. So it's clear that once again Black opening didn't really work and he's just in trouble here. But the main thing I want to show actually is coming very soon. Rook b8, rook a7, queen c8. Maybe something like this, but maybe take, take, and then just gather all, start bringing the pieces to that side. I mean, okay. It's just a pawn down. I mean, we cannot paint it in any 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 different way. H3. No, this this is a pretty move. It has two huge purposes. 
which are run. So just you don't have to worry about some future checkmates on the back rank. Yes, Julian? And definitely you can put your knight on g4. Excellent. So h3 is just quite automatic play. Knight b6. Queen c1. OK. Why did he play queen c1? OK, and wh what does he want to go next? h6 because there are some weaknesses around black king right I mean it's it's clear that there are some weaknesses and especially if the knight might end up on g4 those squares are weak so good move I mean I think black should be thinking about you know exchanging maybe rooks suffering in whatever endgame that he has I mean maybe he's already here unpleasant you know, while doing the you know while doing the video right now, I, I remember Carlson that he once said about he, he his defensive skills, and he said that you know some people say like how can you defend this way and so on, and he said one of his great qualities about himself, and and still he said it in a modest way, which is correct that he, he has a when you need to choose between uh, lash everyone out to you know desperate attack or all men in to guard I believe those were very close to his word that he can balance those very very well which means I mean I think Ikaro lost this game immediately because well okay he, he blundered but he just didn't really want to go to passive long uh, frustrating defense but maybe for example Carson would have done it and after five six hours made a draw Oh, win most of those defenses. No, I mean, indeed, to win this with black is not easy, but I think that's what was wrong. Knight c4. So, Julian, I know that you remember. What did we say about black's position, black's king here? Black is in trouble, right? Yes, Isabel. One thing. One other reason. Why should black be worried here? Yes, Eli. Yeah. Knight to g4, or g4, not to g5. I mean, the, the, you want to attack those squares. So, for example, this maneuver, which was suggested before, is very powerful. But without even specific moves, forget about specific moves. This square, that square. Black only has a bishop to defend. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, this is player number three in the world that got checkmated. And you know, and if he, if he, if he at least, and I don't know if Ben uploaded it on YouTube, but if you had listened to our lectures last week, <laughs> dude, dude, like, let's go to YouTube, you know, St. Louis channel. Like, remember, we mentioned last week, we mentioned games like, uh, uh, one of the games was, we mentioned uh, um, Benjamin Bok against Yu Yung Gai, how m many attacking were on over there. Actually, the best game was the game of Doda against Mesichuk when Black Rook returned from E3 and there were no defenders, zero defenders around White King and just White was lost and some other games that bringing defenders would have said no defenders around the King, none. That's it, one and he's also disappearing soon. So if White will be able to somehow get there, it's over, that's it. And after this move, yeah, he wants to attack the rook and so on. And what now? Julian suggests a take. Threatening checkmate, that's no joke. Threatening checkmate, but the seventh rank defense is like so crucial in so many Sicilians. You have a piece here and white is opening everything, but that's, that's a huge, huge, huge defensive idea. All right. So no, I mean maybe some versions, but but okay. But the idea is correct. I mean the idea is yes. So what else? Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. I was thinking bishop to e3. 
No, but first of all, we want to attack. I mean, if you want to go back, that's all I did. You can, the knight will take, the queen will take. Okay, black, some, black is may, maybe still worse, but somewhat already feeling better. Because white will have bad pawn structure, I mean, still a pawn down, but no. If we go all the way there, going back is somewhat, is basically admitting that we have nothing there. Maybe it's true, but let's see if we do have something there. Knight h5. Knight h5. Okay. <coughs> Bang. Okay, so now we have, to, we have a lot to calculate. Take the knight, take the bishop, take the rook. What's happening? Okay, let's start. Take the knight on h5. What is white going to play? Queen g5. King h8? King g8. And take on f7, right? This I see. So here, 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 here. And that's not really bad. All right. Take the bishop. Going to take back. I assume we're going to take back. Take. Yeah, but now... Actually, how to check mate immediately? Aha, uh -huh. check, right? Excellent. Yeah, and if here, here, and that's it, and the same here. All right. So, and the threat is what? Knight f6? So take. Oh, he didn't take. I mean, if take, how do we play? Knight f6. Here? Yeah, I think this was Black's best line, actually. If I remember, okay, what computer said. And now, computer said, okay, queen h6 is just checkmate, no joke. And the move h3 that was played several moves ago is so crucial. Imagine this position without the move h3 then checkmate. No, this, this way those moves are huge and there are some amazing Kasparov games that not only h3 was crucial but also the king was already on h2 because to avoid some check on the back rank. Some amazing, some of the best attacking games in history. So, a computer I think suggesting this move but yeah, just not to get, but okay, this is anyone can try this at his, uh, you know, Free time. <laughs> I'll play this position. So, bishop g7, take. Maybe threatening checkmate. And that's definitely checkmate. No, like really checkmate. No joke. No, that's, that's incredible. Now let's see, where, where was black's crucial, crucial mistake? I think queen c5 was just a losing move. Yeah, it takes the computer a tiny bit time. Okay. So what computer saying? Right, saying okay, play rook a8, and you know, defend. Okay, plus one. Black had better possibilities before to exchange. But okay, rook a8, okay. Whatever, uh, not best computer in the galaxy, but still decent one saying, less than a point advantage for white. I wonder if before we could have Yeah, queen c8, like, wh why not rook b7? Okay, the line that we suggested. Remember, we suggested take, take, and c4. Once again, okay. You know, we are not miracle workers, right? We cannot make magic. White is, white is better, but black has to find the best way to survive, best, possi best chances to survive. And so queen c5 was just a huge blunder by Nakamura. Yuck. Let's see how long here. Finish. Okay, well the interesting part is that, okay, Ikaro was just playing really, really well for many tournaments and getting to be number three in the world after Karasen and Aronian, which is just really playing, really playing well. Kamnik was so-so, and speaking about so-so, someone that was, <laughs> someone that would really been on fire, like for pretty much the last year, and maybe 
not so many people follow because okay he's not really you know like our top 10 Caruana, Karyakin, Nakamura but Wesley saw like really b had an unbelievable unbelievable year having a, a great great tournament great tournament here until he lost to Aronian and had this not very pleasant game against Dominguez which in some way uh, I think has quite a lot of similarities to well some similarities to the games we've just seen okay Petrov and I take yeah of course one of the one of the main lines I mean is this knight c3 d4 is the other the other line and actually you know I've seen some players play even this ridiculous move and it seems like really wrong and by any standards white looks like white is just going to be much better not so easy I mean at least at least I mean white of course better but huh? Yeah, d4, d4, oh, first bishop e7, and sometimes after, I, of, of course it has to be somewhat better for white, but not really that easy, I think, I think some players, maybe, maybe a game Karyaki and Bu Zhangji, maybe, if, or, or other Chinese player made a draw, and some other, decent grandmasters have been, what's the, what's the difference? between? No, okay, I mean, it's just like a temp, I mean, black. No, nothing wrong. No, it's, it's one other move. I mean, I mean, I think, I think sometimes it allows white maybe some ideas quickly with 95, but maybe I think it's another main move. I, I'm, you know, just for you, I will check for a second what is more, what is more, um, no, because I'm not certain. Somehow I, I remember bishop e7 is more playable, but will take us a second take so knight f6 we are interested in yeah let's see you know been played by okay for example Vashir against Giri Morozevich Wang Hao against Bu Zhangji some really many games of Yusupov okay Yusupov in 2008 so we have, we have Ivanchuk, Hari Krishna actually. Hari Krishna played this against Ivanchuk in a tournament. Ivanchuk won with white. And the main move is indeed bishop e7. Bishop e7, bishop d3. Anand Kramnik. Th those are not really bad players. That was, they, they played this in blitz. Nepomniachi against Grishuk in a rapid. Yeah, Karyak in Wang Hao. Okay. That was last year and so on and actually Karyak in Bujangji I remembered okay in 2012 was a draw so no, it's, a t it's a tough line I mean you know we have extremely strong grandmasters that are playing it and just to be absolutely certain that yeah and pretty much pretty much knight f6 uh, bishop e7 is by far more played than d5 because you don't want to surrender this square so quickly all right but he took took now i have to say something i supposedly there is a book that i wrote long ago that's going to be published sometime actually probably sometime now it's actually if surprisingly i can say it's not me it's the publisher but um and I don't remember anything about the Petrov, but I wrote my book about the Petrov. I don't remember anything. Like, I remember the first two, three moves. But... <laughs> what, what? Don't buy the book? Don't buy the book. <laughs> I, I, I strongly, strongly recommend not to. No, actually, it's, it's maybe not a bad one. But I think that I have one, one important comment in the book, which says this. Which says, dude, if you're playing the Petrov, then, you know, play what the opening is, uh, you know, wh what the opening spirit is. And that is to get an incredibly solid position, maybe slightly worse, 
and make a door. Okay, you know, Kramnik is doing that. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, and I, I remember I wrote a line there. I just spoke to, I wrote a line saying, well, don't get confused. You're not playing the night off. If you want to play the night off, then play the night off. <laughs> and why I say that? Because one, one of the best lines, for example, that I believe so, is to play this way. Like, okay, it doesn't matter uh, the exact. Play knight c6, bishop e6, and then queen d7, and long castle. If white wants to get the bishop, you know, let him have it. You know, but once again, which bishop to give? I think that this is the way they go. Let him have the bishop. Okay, you know. That, that's what you play. So is white tiny better here? Maybe. Uh, is it easy to win for white? Not really. Like... Really, really, not really. So, you know, if you want to play something tiny passive, tiny. I mean, okay, there may be some different lines, with b whether with bishop g4 or bishop e6. The reason I, s I wrote it, it was in a chapter that Karyakin beat, Karyakin beat, beat uh, Kramnik in one of the Tal memorials with unbelievable game. You remember the game, Julian? No? No? 2010, I think. No, like unbelievable, like sacrifice the piece, like, no, just checkmated him, the H file, the everywhere. And then he was winning also against Nakamura, I think it was a draw, but, uh, no, Nakamura was also winning against Kramnik and was a draw. No, there was some, some, some problems started in this line, because you have to understand that in 2008, for example, Anand started playing D4, against Kramnik in the match because I thought he's going to have huge problems what to play against the Petrov. I remember I was on ICC saying a few months before the match, you know, what is Anand going to play against the Petrov? And like, oh yeah, D4, first move, no Petrov. <laughs> so, Bishop E7. But actually this line, this line was played in some, some recent ideas and games were played in this line. And Black, Black was doing actually reasonably well. I mean, we can take a look at some recent examples. But there, there were some games. I think I think one of them was Anand with the white pieces. Let's see. Mm, B6. For example, Nakamura played this against Wang Hao in the Norway tournament. I mean, those are best players, best players in the world, like seriously. And there, there, were, there were other, other games with those ideas. Okay, so it's not anything like really extremely new. Long castle, that's where following the game. Bishop b7 and h4. This is why kinda I want the king to be on the other side and well, you know, I much prefer to be tiny worse than tiny checkmated. <laughs> okay, 97, bishop d3. So, like, he's not joking. Like, you know, he's like, it's like he's pointing everything there and, like, they would take back. But. Yeah, and here, interesting. Well, what to play here? I mean, that, that, that is a, an interesting question. But first of all, I think that black is lacking counterplay here, while white has immediate play over there. I mean, why just want to jump on him like crazy, like knight g5, bring the rook here? I don't know. Everything is really aimed at the king. Well, what, what, what? C5? Yeah. I think C5 was played. I'm not certain I like this move, but okay, on the other hand, I'm not certain what should be liked in this position. I mean, H6 is line suggested by computer, but I doubt it, and rookie, rookie 8 is maybe. Okay, eight or maybe move the knight, but to me, okay, we 
maybe rook e8 and then get the bishop here so you can fight for the e4 square because it's really important to stop this bishop no because there are some sacrifices that can be very nasty okay now what's the problem with c5 d6 and D5, right. I mean, it just weakened this entire entire squares there. You know, it's like it's like you see some young kids playing s uh, super fast C5 when they have a pawn here, and just that's it. They gave away D5, D6 forever and ever and ever. Okay, take. Queen F4. So what are the ideas here. I mean, first of all, even position. I think, why would I say what I think? You tell me. What do you think is the idea of queen f4? I mean, what does he want to do here? Okay. Let's say you will play queen g4 and he can then play this. So no sacrifice. But what are, which other ideas are out there? Yeah, exactly. This is one thing. Just positionally. Let's say black plays king h8. You just want to play here. I, I, if this move, I think c4 and we're going to win the pawn, right? Something like that. And, and if take, okay, then so weak, just clearly white is better. And very nice to see how those pawns are fighting against this bishop. I mean, if white pawns were on c4, b3, okay. Uh, maybe tiny bit some counterplay, but pawns on b2, c3, no, nothing there. Yeah, I, I, th I think that bishop e4 is minimum position idea. I was also thinking maybe g4 in some situation is something to consider. The problem with g4 right now, I think, is bishop e5. But if not, knight g5 is another possible idea. You just want to bring the pieces over there. d5, h5. Yeah, I wonder why if knight g5 immediately could have been played, maybe this was the move. And then, okay, black is surviving. No h5, because bishop g5, and so on. But very dangerous. All, all of those things are super dangerous. But now, queen f5 is really a threat, I think. And g4. So, well, what's the problem here? I mean, we can look at that much deeper, but that's not our purpose. I think that the way I see it is, there's one player that is playing here, and that's white. And the question is whether black can maybe be okay or not. It means that something went tiny bit wrong with his play. Okay, maybe c5. c5 was definitely one move to blame. And also this idea about short castle is probably okay, but maybe matter of taste, but... Yeah, now, is, is this move absolutely necessary? I don't know. Somehow, such a move is really scary. G4. I mean, I can tell you G6. I can tell you the computer wants to get counterplay, open some lines. That's at least computer idea. And G6... Very, very dangerous. Huh. I mean, we, we, we said here several times, right? The danger about pushing pawns when your opponent is attacking. Okay, so take, take. By the way, once again, okay, there are some defenders here, but it looks very, very dangerous. The white rook is there, the queen, the knight, the bishop. 
Yeah, exactly. So basically white is pretty much with everything and the other will can come over. Exactly. So this piece is not defending at all, this piece not, and the queen semi. What, what queen can't remove because then the white will take Right, but, but at least it's covering the f6 square. But yeah, you would much prefer the, to have the queen on g7, for example. All oh, right, g5 has to go here. And here, well, really interesting what was played. Quite a standard idea, but yeah. Rook okay, 7 We many times see it, for example, when there is a king on g7, like, we see the in, in kids puzzles, okay? You will have this position and then white to play and win. Right? So that's a much easier version. Rook to eight seven check. Distracting the king, taking it away from defending f seven, check. And checkmate or winning, doesn't matter how. But okay, but this is tiny bit same idea, but much more complicated. So white Basically, just want to go and see if he can checkmate on on the h file. I mean, take take is really going to be checkmate. D4. Okay, it's logical because he wants to take the knight and then take on g5 with a check. Right? Bishop c4. Yeah, and queen e7 was a move that just not that great move. But it, but it was really, really difficult to see how black can survive. First of all, how to defend the pawn on f7? What's possible to defend it? Rook f8. Rook g7. Rook, okay, rook e7. No, but, but rook e7 is resigning on the spot, no? Le, 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 let's first of all start having few guidelines. If rook e7, take, take, check, and checkmate. So if white gets the f6 square, it's over. So for example, you can also reject bishop d5 on the same token exactly. Take, take, take here and checkmate, right? So, so, so if we get this square and then we combine the rook, it's over. Okay, one. So rook f8. Okay. Rook f8, I thought that this is mamma mia dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think this is losing. Okay, white want to take and go queen h6 and rook h1. And if take, you know, this, this pin that m pretty much everyone misses, but let's say that we are not going to miss. And then this, and kind of checkmate. <laughs> so that's quite serious. Yeah, the only move, but you know, Wesley saw not easy to find people that calculate faster than him on this planet. No, really not easy. But he, he, he <coughs> just like it's just like too much to think about allowing this. Maybe what <sighs> maybe what he missed is that. In such continuation, he has this move and it's not checkmate. This block, may, maybe maybe overlook this. Uh, I'm not certain, but wow. And, and some things, I mean, so this, this. I mean, there are some crazy, two crazy lines. I think this is what computers say, take, take here 
And he, he says white is better here, but I, I'm not certain it's totally winning. Too complicated for us. But look how the game finished. I mean, he, I, he, he had to take on F3, I believe. At least, yeah, computers say maybe, maybe it's still really bad position, maybe even lost. But after this move, maybe he thought, maybe he thought about rook H1 only and then thought that he can take and eliminate the pawn and maybe maybe survive but after this move he just resigned yes yeah.